The following is a Thorf TV production done in cooperation with Jack Thorfinson. Ladies and gentlemen, we're proud to bring to you live all the way, way up north near the Canadian border from Mr. Holster's Ranch, The Sock Show! Starring that one, that only, that incredible kind of YouTube personality, Mr. Holster! That stupid moron is he? Oh, Mr. Holster! Hey! That's me! Howdy, parts! Mr. Holster here. What do we have tonight? Brennevin. Original Icelandic schnapps. Better known as Black Death. Take a little look at it there. Not particularly one of my favorites. Matter of fact, it's probably one of the last things I would ever drink. 37.5% alcohol by volume, which puts it at uh, 75% or 75 proof, which is pretty strong for a schnapps. But, uh, okay, it says in the back here, is made from a purely Icelandic recipe and was first put on the market in 1935 when production was lifted. Production was lifted from, well, I don't, I don't understand that. The black label was chosen because it was considered necessary to have the label unattractive to limit demand for the drink. Seems kind of counterintuitive to, to try and limit your... Only in Iceland. This plan failed, and the black label, together with excessive consumption, resulted in a new name, Brennevin. The best enjoyed neat straight from the freezer, for example, as a chaser with beer. Well, this is, I didn't get a cold first. I blew it because I knew that too, but I didn't get a cold. And I'm having this for a reason tonight because today is my father's birthday. And he was Icelandic, yes. And so, so we're having Brennevin. Although I did have some Icelandic vodka I could have used, this is this is really the drink of Iceland, believe it or not. And so that's what I'm going to have is a little of this. Because you see, I don't have much left, and it's, it's, it's incredibly hard to find. I only have this because my brother brought it back with him in his suitcase from Iceland back in 2001. It's been around here a long time. Well, yeah, it's been around a long time. Because I, I don't drink very much of it, because I really don't like it. But being my father's birthday today, and him being my father, and I think a great guy, I'm going to toast him. And here, I got a little picture out so you can see what my dad looked like. I'm with him here, and we're, we're piloting his Chris Craft 1936. <laughs> Chris Craft Cabin Cruiser. See if I can get that on there. There you go. There's Dad and me. And notice I have a life jacket, but he didn't have to, I guess. He was an adult, so he didn't have to have one. There we are, piloting the boat we had it on the Mississippi. And we used to go down there on the weekends and live on the Cabin Cruiser on the weekends. And I remember that very distinctly because we did it a lot of years. So, let's, uh, get it over with. <laughs> and I'm only having half a shot here, if you notice what. My half was always a little big, huh? See, that's why I was a lousy bartender when I used to used to be a bartender, because I always poured too much. Well, I was pretty close to half a shot. So try, because I'm trying to make this last, because I can't find it anywhere. So, and, and here we go. Happy birthday, Dad. And then... 
got a very unique, and I'm not kind of licorice or not really. It's more a anise or yeah, it's very odd tasting stuff. I will wash it down and try to get off the taste buds because because it it really is not the best stuff in the world. <laughs> and I think the problem is in Iceland, they just, they got nothing to make anything out of, you know? All they got is sheep and fish. And very odd, short, long-haired horses. And you can't take anything, can't bring anything into that country. Because they want to keep everything pure. And even if I went... To go in the country like I'm dressed, they'd probably want to take my clothes and fumigate them before they let me out. I'm not making this up either. If I took, if you take any riding gear with you, it has to be fumigated before they let it in the country. So, uh, any rate, I got one little thing I was going to show you here today. But you know what? Let's put the scar down. And it's hard to. I always get so excited when I get a bunch of new scars. Okay, we'll put that to the side for a moment because we got to have the drawing for last week's contest for the Glock Tumblers. And of course, we were talking about James Kahn and his role as Mississippi in, excuse me, it's the Brennan, the Black Death. Better get that off the screen. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, James Kahn, who played Mississippi, and, of course, he played uh, the, the kill-happy, moronic son of The Godfather and the movie The Godfather. And, and every, every time I watch that movie, I wait for the scene where he gets gunned down at the toll booth, which I think is incredibly interesting that the toll booth is out in the middle of nowhere. And there's no other cars pulling up to us. <laughs> they got them down, that part. At any rate, so that, that's what the answer was. James Kahn and the name, he, the role he played in the movie El Dorado was Mississippi. And what did he say? Gaily bedight a gallant knight in sunshine and in shadow had journeyed long singing a song in search of El Dorado. As his strength felt him at length, he met a pilgrim's shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? O'er the mountain of the moon, down the valley of the shadow. Ride boldly, ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. Or you just get yourself a place and put up a gate and you make it yourself. Okay, here we go, guys. We'll see who the winner is for the lovely set of Glock tumblers. And... Make sure I only get one. And I'm using this hat today. I should say this before I pull this out. I'm using this hat because this is my dad's old duck hunting hat. And I thought I'd use that instead of the John Wayne bean pot. That's why we don't have the John Wayne bean pot today. We got my dad's old hunting cap. Okay. Out of my dad's old hunting cap, we pull Douglas Walther. Douglas Walther. Douglas Walther. There you go, Douglas. PM me your mailing address, and I'll send you your set of Glock tumblers. Okay, pards, there we go. Now, today, I just want to announce this today, that I'm not going to have a contest today, although I'll have a trivia question at the end. But I'm going to stop the contest until my, my 1,000 sub giveaway is over, which I'm going to announce the on a separate video I'm going to have for my thousand giveaway and what I'm giving away and the rules to participate. So until that's over with, I'm not going to give any giveaways because I, you know, I get confused easily. I'm an old guy and get confused easily. I can only handle one contest at a time, just one. So I'll announce that probably on my. Uh, oh wait wait wait. Much better. <laughs> Probably at Bert. <laughs> Probably on my uh, uh, Sunday night chat where I get to have my weekly cigar. Then I'll tell you about it, 
And of course, I'll make a separate video laying out the rules distinctly. But because you know, my Sunday, I might not be that trustworthy in my explanation on Sunday night. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so I thought I'd share this with you. A little World War II artifact here. And that is, that's right, a Japanese hand grenade that I got. Which, of course, the, uh, it has been disarmed by my father back in World War II. And I just thought I'd share that. Nice little cast, cast iron hand grenade. So what it is, just to, just to open, just a cast iron. And they've put gunpowder in there and a fuse and a, and there you go. That's all there really is to these things. But I thought I'd show that since since I'm celebrating my dad's birthday today. And, you know, I got this and his hunting cap and a few other things that uh, remind me of him. I'd share that with you today. So, we'll put that right off to the side here. And I want to read something that was in the paper this week. In the, uh, you know, we've had a lot of rain up here. It's been like, it, it would, you'd rain one day, and the next day be, oh, it's nice, and get you, and you start, oh, well, tomorrow I'm going to do this and that, and then you get ready, you know, and, and it comes and it rains again. And each time it's rained, it's rained like four inches. And there's so much water going through the creek on this property. Just, it's moving so fast. So, at any rate, I just wanted to talk about that before I read this this ad I saw this week in the local shopping page. <laughs> and I know you're wondering why why I even read these. You'd think I'd be too busy, but you never know. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Woman with wet rumpus room seeks man with large sump pump. <laughs> That just kills me. There's a number there. If you you know, PM me if you want it. <laughs> so and you know that reminds me of I went to the dentist the other day, which I do at least once a decade. I go in to get my teeth cleaned, and and drilled once a decade. So I was at the dentist. The dentist was telling me this story. He said this this attractive lady came in earlier in the week. And she said her tooth was bothering her, and she hoped it wasn't a cavity. So he got her in the chair and, you know, did his thing and x-ray and looked at it and says, I'm afraid it's a cavity we're going to have to drill. And she said, oh my God, I'd rather have a child than have you drill a cavity. And he said, well, make up your mind because I'll have to adjust the chair. <laughs> okay, parts. put this aside, and it's tough to do because this is a good one. Okay, put that aside. I thought I'd get out. I'm, I'm doing some stuff with this because I'm making a video for the Ruger Ranger channel. And you should go watch the Ruger Ranger channel. I, I sub to him. He's a great guy. He just really is. And he, But, you know, he's kind of myopic. He only likes and reviews Rugers. But you might want to check out his channel. It's Ruger Ranger. All one word. Ruger Ranger. And, at any rate... He's been working with this gun, and he's doing a video on this gun right here. And this is like one of my most favorite guns in the world, if not, because I always wanted, I always wanted a 45 ACP revolver. But basically, you have to buy uh, an old one, and then it comes with a longer barrel than I wanted, and it, and it's kind of a classic gun. I hate to start cutting it up and making it what I want it to be, you know, and when this came out, I just went, oh my God, because not only is it a 45 ACP with the use of moon clips, but it also uses, yeah, it shoots 45 Colt, which, yeah, this is like my two favorite rounds in the world would be 45 ACP or, yeah, the old cowboy load, 45 Colt. 
and I've used the Fort Winchester 45 silver tips for like 30, 40 years in my in my 45, my 45s. And of course, I talked about all the the Colt single action armies. I, I I had so many of them, and I was you know I'd worked so hard on that collection, and I sold it all when I moved up here because I needed money. <laughs> And it was either is either live in utopia or keep my colt, and it was a tough decision, I'll admit. So, at any rate, Ruger brought out the Red Hawk in this this forty five, and I'll just call it a forty five because it's a forty five colt or a forty five ACP Red Hawk, and they got this. The grip is just absolutely fantastic. It's like the heaviest and largest gun you could possibly get, and still you can conceal carry it believe it or not. Of course, you might have to be kind of a big guy because it is kind of a big cylinder, you know. But it's just a fantastic gun. Absolutely fantastic. And they did such a nice, you know, most of, most of the times when I get guns, first thing I'm looking for is stag grips. And I've always wanted, and this is funny, this is the first Red Hawk I've ever owned. I've always wanted one. I even bought some stag grips one time, figuring I'm going to get a Red Hawk, and I bought some stag grips. Of course, I didn't really like the grips when they came, and I ended up selling them, because they weren't very good. But I actually bought the grips before the gun once, and I never bought the gun because of that, because I got so mad about the grips being crappy. And these grips are so nice, I just, I would never replace them. They're just absolutely perfect. They, they did an absolute great job on this particular gun. And I just really like this gun. And, of course, they put a 4.2-inch barrel on there because those guys the other side of the border just north of me, they got to have a 4.2-inch barrel, anything shorter than that, and the government just goes berserk. <laughs> and speaking of which, this, you know, and I'm going to grab my cigar again because now I'm off on this subject and I can't stop it this nonsense of the leftovers from the 60s. There's, there's nothing worse than an aging hippie, honest to God. These, these guys in the legislature over there in that Washington, D.C., and, and they're demanding, this week they were demanding a vote on gun control. And if they don't get it, you know, nothing's going to happen. They're going to, they sit down on the floor like babies. Of course, they've still got their armed guards protecting them while they're sitting on the floor like babies. And they want to vote to deny people the right to own a gun. And I don't get that. There's four votes on gun bills this week. And none of them passed, so they couldn't proceed. Two of them were from the liberals and two of them from the conservatives to address this issue that, that's a non-issue to me because that nutbag that went in and killed those poor people in that nightclub at 2 in the morning, if it weren't a gun, it would have been a pipe bombs or whatever because he did not plan on coming out of there alive. He, he could have just gone and bought himself a really, 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 really nice truck and put uh, just a huge cattle catcher on it and just driven into the bar and and killed people. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't make any difference if he had a gun or not. And one thing that I haven't heard that I'm wondering about, did the guy own any guns before he went and bought these guns? Did he just decide, well, heck, I'm going to be dead after I do this. I won't have to pay my visa bill. I'll just go out and buy the guns I really always wanted but never, never bought. I mean, because the one gun was that SIG MPX, whatever it is, MCX or MP, I don't know what it is. If it's the 9mm one or the 223, I don't know. Whatever it was he bought, it's like a $2,000 gun. And I'm thinking he probably had guns. He just decided, what the heck, I'm not going to have to pay the bill anyways. I'm going to buy brand new guns for this. And nobody's, nobody's reporting on whether he had guns he could have used and decided to go get new ones to do it. They're all making it sound like he had no way to do it and had to go buy those guns. And I'm wondering, you know, maybe he already had them. There's a lot of stuff here I don't like about the whole thing. And back to the FBI thing again. It just annoys me all to hell. You can bet 
J. Edgar Hoover wouldn't be sitting around being told by the White House what to say. And they relief, release the 911 call, and they just got it. And, and this is the transparency they're talking about all the time. It's the least transparent administration ever. There's no transparency there. They tell you everything they want you to think. That's their idea of transparency. We'll tell them what they what we want them to think, and of course we have to address them, the American public, like they're three-year-olds and don't have a brain in their head. Honest to God, it's like li listening to a really, 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 really bad middle school teacher at best every time the president speaks. So... I'm getting off of that subject. I just thought it was funny. They're all sitting on the floor. <laughs> and then there was the guy from, and you guys in New York, you know, Joey. Joey Cuz can probably tell me who the guy is. This representative from New York that said that people don't need to have guns. And the reporter asked him, well, don't you have armed protection? He said, well, yeah, we deserve it. So apparently, Joey, you don't deserve to have a gun, not like your representative does. <laughs> Just you can't make this stuff up, seriously, can you? No, I don't think you can. So, Look at that. Now we're into this, and I started this before the show. 21 minutes and 44 seconds. Look at that, baby. Have not yet dropped the ash on it. And we're only like, 15% into the cigar. <sighs> well, you know what they say. Well, not everybody said it, but you know what Sigmund Freud used to say. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> and at my age, believe me, it's just a cigar. Okay, before I sign off on my sock show tonight, guys, I'm going to give you a trivia question. And if you've been paying attention to my other shows, you'll know the answer. Now, nah, maybe I better not do that. It might be too tough. Let's see. Um, well, we'll give you two clues. The first clue is my grandmother went to high school with this person <laughs> in Helena, Montana. That's the first clue. I'll wait, because there's probably half of you have probably got it already. I'll wait till you type it in down below. Of course, our prize is non-existent this week. Because I'm going to put all my efforts into my 1,000 sub giveaway. I'm pretty excited about that, because I, was, I, was, I had a YouTube channel for, for decades and only had 15 subscribers. I did, yeah. Been doing it for years and only had 15 subscribers. Got it? Typed in? Okay, for everybody else that doesn't know the answer, the other half of you, this gentleman was, during the Depression, had the biggest salary of anyone in the United States. There's clue number two. Had the biggest salary of anyone in the United States. So, the 10% of you watching that know the answer to that, go ahead, put it in down below. You know, on a sidebar here, I say that because my dad always used to say that. He was an attorney. <laughs> on a sidebar here, my dad hated cigarette smoke and cigar smoke and pipe smoke. He hated it. He just hated it. And and he had on his desk, thank you for not smoking. And he actually, actually kicked someone out of his office once for lighting up a cigar and it was like the biggest deal the corporation had had in a long time. And, yeah. And he, he drop-kicked him out of the office because he lit up the damn cigar. And I even, I even remember that. And I was like seven years old at the time, and I remember that. Because he came home and was so mad and 
And mother went, you didn't. He, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And she was quite upset because she knew before the guy, you know, she knew what the met the guy coming and meeting with him that day and the deal they had. And and she was quite upset that he Yeah. Okay, you got that written down there? Last clue. The last clue. He was in a movie. He was in a movie with Walter Brennan, where Walter Brennan played Judge Roy Bean. And he got an Academy Award nomination for that. I think he might have even have gotten an Academy Award, Walter Brennan, for playing that role of Judge Roy Bean. Okay, everybody, down below, write in the name if you know it. There's probably 10% of you out there still that don't know. And I'll, I'll tell you the name of the movie, and that'll quench it for you. The movie was... Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think you could have typed it in by now, but I'll wait a second. The name of the movie... You know, I'm not going to tell you the name of the movie. I'll give you another movie he was in, and this will be a clincher for you. He played the lead role in the movie. And this guy was, you know, this is one of our all-time great Americans that he played. And he played a lot of great Americans over the years. Even even ones that weren't real. He played from Tennessee. All you guys in Tennessee will know it as soon as I tell you who he played because then you go, oh yeah, I've seen that movie. He played Sergeant York. Yep. And no, it wasn't Sergeant York. You're, you're getting confused with the Audie Murphy movie. Where he played himself. That's that's the joke I just thought explained to you. No, he, he also played one of the great baseball players of all time. And I love this movie, too. He played Lou Gehrig. There's your trivia question for the week's part. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'm very excited about having a thousand sub giveaway. And I, I'm, I'm pulling out all the stops. Which, of course, it's just me here at the ranch by myself because nobody else is here and there's really no stops at all. <laughs> but I'm pulling them out anyways. And I'm surprised you haven't heard that sick calf. Got a sick calf this week, so I had to put mom and the calf in a stall. And, oh, God. That cow all day long has been screaming her head off because she wants to be out with everybody else. Really? And I commented to myself, because nobody else is here. Well, actually, Jack. Jack was with me when I said it. I turned to Jack. Yeah, I didn't talk to myself. You see, yeah, I always make you think I'm crazy, but I'm not. I turned to Jack, and I said to Jack, is this the worst mother you've ever seen in your life, as she's kind of walking all over her kid, screaming her head off because she didn't get to go out with everybody else? You know what I'm saying? And Jack said, I, I, I don't know, I... I barely remember my mother. I All I know is I was born, they shoved something down my throat to worm me, and boom, I was in a cage somewhere. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, pards, go out and stay safe. That, that, that. Go out and stay safe. <laughs>